One of the biggest frustrations for small businesses new to government contracting is that it seems as though by the time an opportunity appears on FedBizOps, it's already wired for another company. Even if it's not wired, the 30-day window which you'll have to put together your proposal can be pretty short for a small shop with only a few people juggling a thousand different issues. This is especially true when you'll need to find teaming partners for a successful bid, which is becoming more and more likely as contracts are getting bundled. So how can a small business figure out how to work smart and anticipate upcoming leads without spending big bucks on procurement tracking services and software? Well, in addition to checking forecasts, examining the archives for soon to expire contracts, and digging through agency strategic plans, small businesses should not overlook the federal procurement data system. Federal government contracting, just like anything else, is about building relationships. Whether or not it should be that way, contracting officers are humans. So, unless a blind review system is instituted, who knows you and who likes you matters. The Federal Procurement Data System tracks all federal government contract spending and includes some details that you cannot find on USA Spending. Through FPDS, you can find out which departments and agencies to target, as well as which individuals within those agencies you should try to build relationships with. To get started, go to fpds.gov. As you can see, the system is now powered by Google, so you can enter a keyword or NAICS code to easily find relevant contracts. I'm going to keep it simple and search for pencils. The first thing you'll notice when you get to the results page is that you're shown a list of all contract actions, not just the original contracts themselves. Any changes, options, or cancellations are also shown. If you want to take the full list and manipulate it, you can export it to a, to a PDF or Excel file using the buttons at the top of the list. You can also further refine the search results by clicking the advanced search results and sort the results using one of the fields listed on the right hand side. Once you've narrowed the list down to only those contracts relevant to your business, you can start narrowing your focus and developing your strategy. On the left hand side of the screen, you'll see the top 10 departments and top 10 agencies that buy what you sell. That's very important information, because unless you're a huge company, you probably don't have the time and resources to target more than a few agencies. You can also see the top 10 vendors of what you sell. That lets you know who your biggest competitors are, so that you can do some research and competitive analysis and know how to set your company apart. Additionally, if you're interested in subcontracting work, you'll know what primes to target because you can see who's getting the most business. Now let's dig into the contracts themselves. Fittingly enough, the first contract we see under pencils is Pencils, Inc. If you click View, you'll get to see the basic contracting information. The first thing you want to look at here is who prepared and who modified the contract. In general, contracting officers are assigned procurements based on the size and type of the contract. That means that if you're reviewing a contract that would have been perfect for your company, you want to make note of the contracting officer's name and contact information, and then go make a friend. The goal is to build a relationship with this person over time so that when something that's right for you is coming down the pipeline, that CEO will let you know. The next thing to note is the contract's completion date. If this is something that will be a recurring need, you can get an idea of when a new contract will come out based on when the current contract is scheduled to end. That way, you can begin preparing to bid on something before it shows up on FedBizOps because you're aware that it's coming. If you sell a lot of products or services that would fit the requirements for a micro-purchase, you also want to take note of whether or not this purchase was made on a government credit card. If it was, you now know that the contracting officer listed at the top has access to a government credit card. And again, you should take note and go make a friend. Finally, you can take a look to see if this contract has been set aside for any particular group in the past. This example is a small business set-aside, as you can see by the selection on the drop-down menu in the type of set-aside category. This information lets you know whether or not the next contract after the current one expires is likely to be a set-aside, so that you can position your company appropriately. Once you know what agencies and individuals to target, your government contracting strategy should fall into place much more easily, because you know where to focus your time and attention to get the most bang for your buck. I hope these FPDS tips helped you develop your government sales strategy. For more tips, tricks, and tutorials, subscribe to this YouTube channel and follow me on Twitter.